This is a restaurant okay. and it has some sitting area, a kitchen area and some parking areas. We'll take you through as the project goes and you see how we've done the finishes. Hello viewers, my name is Paul, the ISSB expert. So we're back on site in Kabete where we came to make the interlocking stabilized soil blocks. So the blocks are now ready after the curing period and now we go into the construction stage. So number one, we shall start with the foundation trenching. Then we'll go to the footing. Then we'll do the foundation walling. After that, we'll come up with a slab and then build up with the ISSB blocks. Viewers, we're on site and our construction is ongoing. As you are aware, when you're building using interlocking stabilized soil blocks, you do not require mortar on the joints. So when you're building with the blocks, you'll do a normal foundation. You raise foundation using the quarry stones. Then you get to the slab, add your DPM. On the first course is when you put some mortar. So the mother block will sit on some mortar. Yeah. Then after that, you interlock the blocks until you get to the ring beam level. Then the ring beam will lock the blocks and then you can put your roof in. Viewers, you'll be required to put your hoop iron after every fourth course of the ISSB blocks. The blocks do not require on mortar on the joints, so they're just interlocking. So you, you get your block, interlock with that, wait. Then when you get to the next course, you So how are you saving your costs of construction using interlocking stabilized soil blocks? Number one, you're making blocks from site using locally available material. Number two, when you're building with the blocks, you don't require mortar on the joints because the blocks are interlocking. Number three, the blocks are smooth and uniform. They, re they don't require plaster. Number four, you're using the dry stacking method. So the speed of construction is quicker and you reduce the costs of labor. Fourth, finally, the blocks are environmental friendly, you don't require to burn them. Today we are going to show you how we do the corners, because that has been coming up on how we do corners using interlocking blocks. It's a short demonstration. So, you have your block here, the other one here. So what you'll need to do is to cut off this block, trim it off with any tool that you have on site, here we are going to use a panga, which is mostly found in the construction sites. Good. So, one block comes here. And then, yeah. And then after that you can run your courses. Run there. There. So when you get to the next course, you do the same. comes here. Yeah. 
there and you chip lock there. So you'll follow the same sequence until you get to the beam level. So this is done for every corner of the house? For every corner of the house, the same procedure is done. Okay. You only need the simple tool of uh, a panga or any sharp uh, object nearby? Yes. Okay. That's what you need. And does it affect the dry stacking method? How strong is it at the corners? No, it does not affect the dry stacking method because at the end of it all, after the end of the courses, the ring beam will come and sit on the blocks. So yeah. it will hold the blocks in a steady, uniform way. Okay. Yes. So after mixing your soil, you oil the mold box using used engine oil. The purpose of the oil is to reduce the friction between the machine and the soil that is being compressed. So after you've oiled the mold box, you get your soil. Okay, after you get your you get your DPM paper, which you lay it inside the machine so that the soil doesn't does not stick with with the mold. Yes, you then get your material, which is soil stabilized with some cement and some little water, load it on the mold box. In the mold box. Then you level the material using a plank of wood. Then we are ready for compaction. One minute. Wait, wait, wait. The machine requires two operators. One will close the mold box. The other one will pass the handle to his colleague and then compress. Yes. So, to make sure that the blocks are uniform in size, the compression must flush here with the, with the gauge. Then we Open. Good. Then you eject your block. So once the block is compressed, then you slide it a bit, and here is your block. After the blocks were cured for 14 days, we now started the construction. So after the construction, we do something called the surface protection. On this project, we have used varnish as a surface protector. As you can see, the blocks have the same color of the soil that we, we managed to get on this site. So the glossy finish is because of the varnish, the clear varnish that we have used as surface protection for the blocks. Yes. Here at the project, we are actually at uh, about 90%. So we're just doing like the simple works of the tiling. We've done the surface protection, we've done the roofing, we've done, we've done, uh, we've done most of the works actually complete. So we are actually about uh, more than 90% of the project. We just, we've done the paint works, we've done the surface protection, we've done the piping, we've done the electricals, we've done the plumbing, all is done. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you need to do on the interlocking stabilized soil blocks? On the inter interlocking blocks, everything has been done and the, and the project is ready for use. Okay. Yes. Uh, now this is a question towards uh, international viewers. Yes. Uh, most of them are asking the accessibility of the machine. So yes. how would you assist them, especially those uh, residing within Africa? Okay. The machines are available for export. I can export the machines for you to any part of Africa. You just need to get in contact with me and then you can uh, advise me on the shipping uh, destination that you want the machine to reach you at and then we can arrange on the logistics and then uh, I could send the machine over to you. 
Okay. Another thing, what about training? Once uh, that particular person has received the machine, how would you be able to assist them when it comes to the usage uh, of that interlocking stabilized machine? Okay. The training, there are two options. I, o I offer online training and also on-site training. So we can agree. Maybe if you're in a country which is nearby, or we can agree on the logistics on how I can come to your country and to offer you the training on uh, soil selection, block production, and also construction skills. I can come over to your country and also do training for you. Alternatively, then we can organize one online class. I'm also offering online classes and we can agree on uh, the timing because some countries are maybe some few hours ahead. We can agree on the timing and I'll send you a timetable and a training schedule on how the online training shall be done. Okay. Also another common question, because this site has used red soil for the, use, for the making of the ISSB blocks, yes. there are people who are wondering if you could use sand soil. Is it suitable? Yes, it is suitable to use uh, sandy soils. You can use even uh, machine cut waste. You can use quarry dust. So all materials you, you, you can, what you do, if you have a material which you think uh, you need some more investigation for it, you can send the material to me and then I'll advise you on how we can use it. But all other materials is possible to use, especially stone dust, machine cut waste, sandy soils, and uh, all other soils are, are, are easy to use. Okay. Use it. Yeah. And just to clarify, is it okay to use uh, the sandy soils that you find at the beach? Okay, if the soils are too fine, then you need to fortify them and add them maybe some, some coarse material, maybe like stone dust, but it is possible to use uh, sandy soils. Okay. It is possible. Okay. One final question. Yes. How, how high can you build uh, using ISSB blocks? Like uh, for this instance, for this project being a restaurant, it's only on the ground floor. Is it possible to go above uh, three stories? Yes, it is possible to go as many stories as you want because these interlocking blocks are mostly used for uh, partitioning, for walling and infills. So the skeleton of the building shall be concrete. So you'll use the interlocking stabilized cell blocks for the walling, partitioning and infills. It is possible. Okay, thank you.